everyone, it's Jenny, and welcome back to my channel, This Story Ain't Over. Today, I'm really excited to be bringing you a book recommendations video because I feel like it's been a hot minute since I did one based off of a certain genre. So for today's video, we are going to be talking about some urban fantasy book racks, both in YA and in adult. And this video is being kindly sponsored by Disney Book Group for the release of Ballad and Dagger by Daniel Jose Older. I've been watching Daniel Jose Older for a while now. I haven't read his books yet, but I've been meaning to for a long time and I know he really cares about diversity in publishing and in the stories that we tell and so I'm really excited that he has a new YA novel coming out from Rick Riordan Presents which is as you guys know, one of my favorite imprints ever. It was created by Rick Riordan to bring all these amazing diverse stories from diverse voices to the public and to the people who are wanting that diversity. So Ballad and Dagger is a music and magic filled YA urban fantasy and it follows two teens who discover each other and their powers during a political battle within their unique diaspora community. This will be book one of two in the Outlaw Saints series and it is set in a world of magic, myth, and where gods reign over the streets of Brooklyn. As I said before, Daniel Jose Older has already many books under his belt. He's an acclaimed fantasy writer and he's a New York Times bestseller. He's the author of the Shadow Shaper Cypher series and also contributed two novels to the Star Wars High Republic series. This seems like it's going to be urban fantasy at its best. I love urban fantasy that pulls in different types of magic systems and also different cultures and really sets itself in the time period and place that it's set in. And this is actually set in a distinctive invented neighborhood populated by a combination of Cuban Santeros, Sephardic Jews, and pirates. It's also got what seems like it's gonna be a thrilling love story and a really heartbreaking love story where two ancient souls are reunited at last, which is literally all I look for in romances. I love the concept of souls coming back together, like, you know, being destined for each other. Love that. And of course, our author, Daniel Jose Older, is also of the background that he's writing about. So he is Latinx. He also has Jewish roots. Santeria is his personal spiritual tradition. And he also comes from the diverse neighborhood of Brooklyn. This is Rick Riordan Presents' first ever YA novel. They've been doing middle grade all before, but this is definitely not going to be the last one. I'm pretty sure they have a lot more on the horizon. So I'm super excited for that. And so excited for Daniel Jose Older, who is going to be starting this this line of YA novels. I think this is going to be so fantastic because it's already giving me vibes of other urban fantasies that I love, which I will talk about later in this video. So stay tuned for those, but definitely go check out Ballad and Dagger by Daniel Jose Older. Link down below to check it out. Go buy it, go grab it, support this author. Definitely go check it out. I am so excited for this one and cannot wait to read it soon. Alrighty, so now on to the urban fantasy book recs that I wanted to give you today. I feel like all of these are books that I've either read before or are pretty popular right now and that I probably mentioned in many other videos before, but I thought it would be nice to wrap them all together in one nice video. I absolutely love urban fantasies. I think they are some of my favorite fantasies as well because there's something about the magical and the real world coming together that is so exciting and it makes you think that you know your world can be magical too which I love. So the first book that I want to mention today is one of my most recent favorite urban fantasies which is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. I feel like this one will come as no surprise to anyone watching this video. If you have read this book you know how awesome it is or maybe you didn't love it but I don't care because I love it and it's fantastic. This book is partially a reimagining of the legend of King Arthur. So it sort of maps some of the characters onto some of the characters in here. And it also informs a lot of the magic system that's going on in this book. So basically this book follows her main character, Brie, who is reeling from the death of her mother. She has died in some sort of mysterious way. It seemed like a car accident, but it might be something more. And Brie is going off to this pre-college program at this university. And she's got a lot more questions than answers. And she feels like her life is sort of off the rails. She's not sure what she wants anymore. But when she encounters this sort of secret society, at UNC Chapel Hill, she starts to realize that they might have something to do with her mother's death. They're called the Legendborn and they're a group of people who believe that the legend of King Arthur is real, that he actually existed, all the knights in the round table existed and they had these descendants. And so they are all descendants of King Arthur and his round table. And they are all in these like different bloodlines and like have these different powers. And there's also someone who is like a Merlin with like more magical powers and there's all this other stuff going on. But all this is sort of like unknown to the wider world. They are just operating in secret. And they're also protecting the world from demons and things that come from alternate realms. And so Brie thinks that 
there might be something going on here. There's also a really large aspect of race that plays into this and the history of the location that she is in. And what I loved about this was that it was urban fantasy done right. It not only, you know, captures those magical elements and brings those to you in a really interesting and exciting way, but it also tackles some really amazing and difficult real world topics and incorporates them with the magical elements. So, you know, the magical elements are sort of like a metaphor or a heightened version of what is actually going on in our real world. I absolutely loved it. It was like a story of self-discovery and of love. And there's like a little bit of a love triangle, which I actually really like. And it's a bit of a generational story. There's this idea of being connected across generations and, you know, passed on trauma, but also taking strength from the people who came before you. I absolutely loved it. Overall, it is such a stunning book. I cannot wait for the sequel, which is coming out later this year. And I definitely think you should jump on this and read it soon because it's freaking amazing. Alrighty, this next book is a little bit of a cheat, I think. I don't know. I feel like I searched up the definition of urban fantasies and you get sort of one definition, but sometimes they're like more specific and sometimes they're less specific. So this one is technically a historical fantasy. It has more historical bits to it and some fantasy bits to it, but it's technically set in our real world. So it still feels like an urban fantasy, to me at least. So I'm gonna call it an urban fantasy. And that is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. This one is a pretty popular book. It is a reimagining of Romeo and Juliet, but set in 1926 Shanghai. I absolutely love that it is set in this setting because it just comes to life on the page. But in this version of the reimagining, Romeo and Juliet come from two opposing gangs. So Romeo or Roma in the book is from the White Flowers Gang, which is the Russian gang in Shanghai. And then Juliet or Juliet Kai is from the Scarlet Gang in Shanghai and they're a Chinese gang. And so these two are from opposing gangs and have a lot of history going on with their relationship. And the book sort of starts off when a mysterious plague is running running through Shanghai and killing off members of both gangs. And so Julia and Roma have to work together to figure out what's sort of going on. And it seems like there might be a monster responsible and lurking the streets of Shanghai. I absolutely love this book. It is more of a mystery and more of a historical novel, but it has a touch of magic to it, I would say. And I found that really, really interesting. And it definitely sort of genre bends, which I feel like is what urban fantasy does. So definitely a fun one to pick up if you're looking for something historical or not set in a Western world, really fun. Alrighty, the next one is a classic that I cannot go without mentioning, the OG queen of YA urban fantasy, and that is Cassandra Clare's Shadowhunter books. So I'm specifically holding up Clockwork Angel, which is the first book in the Infernal Devices series. She's got like five different series in this world of Shadowhunters. But basically the concept of Shadowhunters, if you didn't know, is that they are these people who are sort of descended from angels or have angel blood in them and they are tasked with sort of protecting the human world from demons and monsters and all this stuff from different realms. And so the first series that she started this whole world with was the Mortal Instruments series, which features this main character, Clary, who sort of encounters this world of shadow hunters and is sort of confused as to why she can see them because most people can't, most humans don't know they exist. And she finds out that she might have something to do with them. And so the reason I'm holding this book in particular and like, highlighting the Infernal Devices in particular is because it's my favorite series of her Shadowhunter books. This series in particular is set in the 1800s in London, it features a bunch of different characters that are both new and familiar, but I really loved this one and sort of the trajectory of the plot and the characters in this series in particular. They are so close to my heart. I read this series back when I was like 13 or something, so it has a very special place in my heart. But regardless, it's fantastic if you're looking for something urban fantasy, both this one and all the other Shadowhunter books. They've got vampires, werewolves, fairies, and just different paranormal creatures that cross the line between reality and fantasy. I personally love the take that Cassandra Clare took on so many of these creatures and how interesting she made them while also making them very, very human. Like they feel human despite being like a werewolf or a vampire or whatever. Like they weren't caricatures, they were fully fleshed out characters, which I loved. Alrighty, next I have a couple books from the same author who you may know very well. She's a popular author, and that is Victoria Schwab. So I have the archived series that she had. This is her first ever YA series or second ever YA series. And this one's quite interesting, and I feel like it's a very underrated recommendation because the series was actually never finished, but I feel like you can still read the first book and the second book 
without really getting a third one and still be fine with it. The first book is The Archive, the second book is The Unbound, and basically it follows our main character Mackenzie Bishop whose brother has recently died and she and her parents are taking over this like rundown hotel. And so it's a totally new sort of environment for her but she's also reeling from her brother's death. And amidst all of this what you start to find out is that Mackenzie sort of has a second life. She is something called a keeper and in this version of our world there is like this alternate dimension called the archive and this is where the dead are kept like books on shelves. They're called histories and they are kept in this like library in the archive. And so Mackenzie as a keeper is tasked with capturing dead souls that are sort of roaming around the different hallways of the archive I guess in this like different realm and making sure that they make it to the library and onto their shelves. But of course nothing ever goes right in books so she's going to face some challenges and meet some new people as well and I actually really enjoyed this. I love the cross between the real world and like the world of the dead and sort of the creepy paranormal aspect to it. This was definitely a bit slower than her other books but I still really enjoyed it and I thought it was really interesting and I feel like the magical aspect of it was just so cool. Alrighty and then the other urban fantasy book rec that I have from Victoria Schwab or V.E. Schwab is This Savage Song. This is probably my favorite Victoria Schwab book ever out of like basically all of them. I actually really like Vicious as well but this one I love the way that she thought of this world and envisioned it. I feel like the paranormal aspects are so unique and she really tried to create her own lore for it. But not only that, I feel like the way that she created the fantastical aspects really reflects on our real world and some real world issues that are going on. So this book is set in an alternate version of our world and it's set in this specific city called Verity. And in Verity and many other cities around it, they've been overrun with monsters. And so because of that, each of the cities has sort of closed themselves off and it's very hard to get in between them. And the reason for these monsters is because of human violence. So there are three types of monsters, Corsi, Malachi and Sunai. Corsi are flesh eating monsters, Malachi are blood drinking monsters, and then Sunai are soul stealing monsters. And all three of them sort of spring from the ground and are created when a human commits an act of violence. And so depending on the severity of that act of violence, the stronger the monster will be. And so these various cities have created all of this violence and created so many monsters so they're just running around but with these monsters comes more violence and it's just an endless cycle. And so in this book we have two main characters Kate and August. Kate is the daughter of like sort of a mob boss who protects half the city of Verity from monsters and gets a fee and is sort of like this horrible person and she wants to be horrible like him. She wants to be a monster hunter. She wants to gain her father's approval and be cold like him. And then we have August who is a monster. He's actually a soul eating monster called a Sunai but he feels like a normal human boy and all he really wants is to be a normal human. And so he is actually helping some humans on the other side of Verity fight off monsters and keep humans safe. And when word reaches his side of the city that Kate Harker or the daughter of this big mob boss is going to be enrolling in a school in town. He enrolls in that same school to sort of get the down low on her and also potentially use her as leverage against this mob boss. And the author has actually described this book as like Romeo and Juliet with monsters but without the romance which I feel like is such a great description of it. It really does feel like that. It is such an interesting examination of like what humans are like and sort of this monstrous aspect is so interesting. And I just love how it's a metaphor for so many things. But I also love that this was quite action packed in the later half of the book as well. And I just loved seeing Kate and August work together. And I feel like there's so many scenes in this book that were just so vivid in my head as well. So I feel like it was both really creepy but also super cool and just such an interesting examination of just what it means to be human and why we do the things we do and I just loved it so so much. Alrighty this next one is a bit of an urban fantasy but also sort of a sci-fi so it's sort of jumping across genres but you could classify it as an urban fantasy so I want to talk about it. That is The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. I read this recently for the Reading Color Book Club and absolutely adored it and it is set in our real world in New York City and it follows these five different people who are sort of these like avatars of the city. In this version of our world, each city has sort of a life and it can be born. And when it does, it imbues its power to different avatars or a avatar to represent itself. But there's a sort of enemy force that is working against these cities being born and putting these people in danger. So in this book we are following five different characters I think. Each one represents a borough in New York City. So we've got like Staten Island, 
Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan. Each borough has a person and we're following these different characters as they're coming together and trying to figure out who this enemy is and work together to help the city be born. What I love about this is that it is very much rooted in New York City. It really has the soul of New York City. You can feel the different boroughs come to life in the way that they're embodied in each character. And this book is super diverse as well. Each of the characters comes from some sort of different background, which I loved. And I just love seeing them all sort of come together and sort of the different marginalizations sort of rub up against each other as well. It was super interesting. And overall, just a really great book. I think you can both read it as a contemporary novel with like a sci-fi bend to it and also read it as a bit of a fantasy and overall super, super cool. This book will confuse you infinitely at the beginning, but just stick with it. And I highly recommend the audiobook as well. I said I was stretching the definition of urban fantasy, so I'm doing it again with this next one, which is The Gilded Wolves by Roshni Chakshi. I feel like this one does kind of count. It's set in a historical period in the 1800s, but it does have a bunch of like fantasy elements going on and sort of this idea of secret fantasy things going on unbeknownst to all of the regular humans. So this is set in 1889 in Paris and it follows like six different characters who all come together to sort of pull off a heist. I know it sounds a little bit like Six of Crows, but it's very different. This is very much set in history and deals with the consequences of colonialism and the global impact of that. And all these characters are very distinct and unique, have their own specific traits that make them who they are. And I loved reading from each of their perspectives, but this story overall has a fantasy element to it. And the best way that I can describe this, because I'm very bad at describing the magic in this book, is that different objects can be imbued with magic. And this is an ability called called forging. And so certain people have this ability and they're all managed by the Order of Babel. I think that's what it's called. And there are these different houses as well with this different prestige and these different objects that they've collected over many years and through colonialism and all that. And so our main character Severin is the jilted heir to one of the houses and he's trying to get back his, you know, birthright. And the other characters are sort of helping him also uncover this secret treasure that may also help them with their individual needs. But what I love about this book and the magic system in this is that it really is a parallel for real life issues and uh, historical issues as well. This idea of imbuing a object with power and how when those objects are taken away, it takes power away from the original place. The series both deals with difficult topics and, you know, really interesting historical things, but also is really light and has some really great moments between the characters. And is also very character driven as well, which I absolutely loved. So if you're looking for another historical urban fantasy, this is definitely one to pick up. Alrighty, and this last one that I want to mention is another sort of stretch of urban fantasy definition. I actually think this one is pretty much an urban fantasy, but that book is The Atlas Six by Aldi Blake. This book features six different characters who are brought together by this man named Atlas, and each of them is a magic user of some kind. So this is in an alternate version of our world, and certain people have magical powers. They can be very, very different abilities. Some of them are like mind reading or like illusions or, you know, manipulating physics, that kind of thing. And so all six of these characters come from very different locations and backgrounds and places. And they are all brought together by this man named Atlas who invites them to the Alexandrian society to compete for a year to become new sort of protectors of the society. But the caveat with this whole situation is that while six of them are invited to become new recruits, only five of them will actually make it through the initiation. And so one of them will lose in the end and they're sort of competing against each other, but they're also learning all these dark and mysterious secrets from the Alexandrian society, which also preserves like the whole library of Alexandria and all of this knowledge, which I find so interesting. So I love that this sort of incorporates some like historical things, but also set in our present day and has characters from all over the world. And it's very diverse as well, which I loved. And it really delves into this idea of knowledge and the power of it and what it means. And I loved just the way that the characters sort of interact with the magic as well and the stuff that they're learning. And I love the characters as well. Each character is like so unique and distinct. They've all got their very specific personality traits and way that they act and also very specific magical powers as well. And I just love seeing them interact in the different like ships that I had as well and the different friendships that form as well. So super cool, very character driven as well. So a really fun one to read. And with that, those are all of the urban fantasies that I wanted to recommend today. I feel like just talking about all those, I was just reminded of how awesome each of these books were. So I'm really excited to maybe pick up some of these again. I will say Atlas Six, I've only read the self-published version. I am planning to pick up the traditionally published version soon. And there are definitely other urban fantasies that I've heard of that I want to read, but I haven't yet picked up. So if you have an urban fantasy book rec for me, leave it down below. I would love to hear 
which ones you guys love or which ones I forgot to mention because there's probably one I forgot to mention. I love the idea of urban fantasy and love how it's executed sometimes and just the themes that it can bring to life and the metaphors that it allows. So yeah, I can definitely say it's like a favorite genre of mine and I'm hoping to find more books that I'll love in this genre. So with that said, let me know if there are any books on this list that I recommended that you really love and also really enjoyed and if there are similar ones to those specific books as well let me know down below. And if you haven't already, go check out my Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, and TikTok in the description down below. I update there regularly on my reading and my life. I recently went to Mexico. If you want to see some of my vacation photos, go check out my Instagram, but overall a fun time. And thank you so much again to Disney Book Group for sponsoring this video for the release of Ballad and Dagger by Daniel Jose Older. Super excited for this urban fantasy. I think it's going to be fantastic. And you guys should definitely go check out the link in my description to grab it. It is out now. And with all that said, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. So please remember that this story ain't over. Bye.